Okay, we're back here live in New York City for SiliconAngle.com's coverage of theCUBE at Strata plus Hadoop World. This is a big data week, a lot of action. We're going to get right into the interview. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, get the signal, share that with you. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, open research, free research. Go there and check it out. And we're here with Saptek San, who is the senior product manager at uh, uh, Microsoft for big data. Saptek, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you, you're welcome. Good to see you again. Uh, <laughs> everybody wants to know, you know, what's what's going on with Microsoft. Um, you guys were sort of the the last of the big whales to sort of indicate <laughs> your intention in uh, in Hadoop, and, and you've done that. And so you've you know cleared up a lot of the questions last year, and so we're happy about that. So thanks well, for doing that. And uh, so why don't you give us an update on what's new with Microsoft and what's happening? Absolutely. Uh, first of all, we made some announcements yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so we um, announced the uh, preview of Microsoft HD Insight Server, uh, which is the on-prem uh, version of Hadoop on Windows, uh, optimized for Windows. Uh, under, uh, it's, it's totally 100% Apache Hadoop, so anybody who's using Hadoop today, should it should work straight out of the gate. Uh, we also announced uh, the HD Insight service for Azure. Uh, so that's, that's the, uh, you know, you can set up a HD Insight cluster pretty easily on uh, Windows Azure and be able to mount uh, Azure storage, pull in data from there, uh, do your analytics that you need to do, and, and that's also 100% Apache Hadoop. Uh, and you're Stratford. using uh, Hortonworks HTP, right? You have, you have a deal right. with Hortonworks. Yeah, so yeah, we are working very closely with uh, Hortonworks and, and partnering on the engineering front. Uh, we are doing a lot of the optimization for uh, Windows uh, and Azure ourselves, and we are uh, submitting those patches back uh, into into uh, the Apache uh, tree. So. So tell me about Microsoft's uh, role in Hadoop. I want to just clear up the air here. Obviously, Microsoft's got a lot of bashing going on with Windows 8 right now, and you know everyone likes to kick Microsoft when they're down, but you guys are doing some pretty good work. Obviously, the Excel demo we saw was, was the talk of the show yesterday. We're going to have those guys come on. We made a slot for them at 10.30, uh, so if you want to come back at 10.30 and, and check that out. But uh, talk about the history of, 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 you guys are no stranger to big data. Yeah, you had so, to, yeah. So, no. so, so just clear up, cle Absolutely. clear up for the, for the record, you know, Microsoft's role with open source and big data, so Specifically, uh, specifically means big data is a kind of uh, uh, ambiguous term, but um, that's why we love it. So. <laughs> <laughs> great for our, great for our media business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> great uh, for our research too. Uh, <laughs> but uh, if you think about it, we have been uh, doing big data forever. Um, uh, we have some of the largest web properties uh, on the planet with Bing, with uh, Xbox Live. You can think of it. It's, it's a supercharged social network, of course. Uh, you have Microsoft.com, uh, which is, I, I think, one of the top 10 websites on the planet. So y you'd think that we need a lot of capability in terms of um, scale-out infrastructure to process a lot of data, and, and we do have uh, that infrastructure, and uh, like you rightly said, we have uh, Cosmos and, and Dryad um, uh, around that. Uh, but we also have that experience to build a scale-out infrastructure. That's that's what is so cool. On the other hand, um, we have deep experience with the enterprises. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, it's hard to name. Uh, you know. Yeah, you guys are <laughs> you guys own the enterprise. I mean, whether it's, whether it's office on the end user side or in the data center with SQL Server, certainly you guys rock and roll on, on that. No no problem. Exactly. But, but but bridge the gap here. Obviously, Microsoft's known for their developer community. Right. Um, and developers now shifting to open source. You have run web scale. You know, Hadoop started right, at Yahoo. Right, everyone right, talked right. about the web scale guys were the first generation to understand and build Hadoop, except for the NSA, which we had Squirrel on. They had their own little private version of big right. data. But right. so just talk about how you bridge that gap from the new order, the new world, the modern world of Hadoop to the old school Microsoft developer community. Because essentially HD Insights fits that. You guys have that product. So right, explain right. how that fits in and what it means to developers. So I HD Insight or, or Hadoop in general provides something great. It's a, uh, it's a very robust 
distributed storage platform as well as a, a computation framework in terms of MapReduce for the time being at least on top of it. Uh, there are other computation frameworks out there for distributed computing and we uh, already have been doing in our HPC space with that and, and some other areas with our MPP database in parallel data warehouse and so on. So, but we think that Hadoop is a very important part of the overall big data um, platform, so to say, but it's it's not the be all and end all. Um, uh, you you, ha you have even today means uh, eighty percent or or some somewhere around that range. Uh, data sits on relational databases. Or uh, people need to build cubes to do. Uh, uh, kind of analytics that they want to do to have that interactivity from the uh, end user BI tools. Uh, they have to deal with uh, streaming data and that's where uh, complex event processing engines uh, become important. Um, uh, then of course that's, that's, the, that's the source of the data but at some level across all these different data stores you need to do enrichment. You want to do discovery and recommendation. And that's where I think uh, one of the greatest value is, and and that's a you know uh, in the industry that's the missing piece where that layer works well with the uh, data source or data store layer, uh, and and we are super focused on that. Um, uh, HD Insight um, uh, and Hadoop provides, of course, the uh, raw storage and and the. Uh, and the MapReduce computation layer on top of it. But beyond that, uh, how do you enrich that data to be, um, and, and do discovery so and recommendation? So let's take, let's break this down. So I just want to understand this, because obviously um, the big thing about open source is you can bring data to the table, and data right. mashups is right. really popular. Right. So you got Windows Server um, out there, and you got Azure. Um, how do I bring data into the, into the cloud without paying through the nose? Because right now, most developers are doing bare metal because it's a lot less expensive. Um, you may or may not have an answer for this yet, but I want to ask anyway. <laughs> sure, One, sure. Uh, I'm provisioning my own hardware and bare right, metal, right, standing right. those up, servers up, right. commodity gear, scale out, all great. How do you guys provide that insight? So one of your elements is data enrichment and insight and HD insight. So, so how can I leverage and develop on the top of the stack without right. Right. using Azure or doing anything else? Yeah. So in, in the first part of your question, you mentioned that, uh, yeah, it's expensive to bring data in and, and so, and You're smiling, why are you smiling? Because <laughs> it's true, right? <laughs> it is true, and I completely <laughs> agree. Uh, and, and that's why data locality is so important, because in today's day, on, day and age, as I'm carrying uh, around my uh, phone and walking around, I'm generating data. And, and maybe the, the best place to store that data is in the cloud, because it's being collected from, as we today call it, Internet of Things. By the way, that's the next hype. Uh, <laughs> so yes, yeah, I can see it coming already. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, from all these uh, endpoints that we have now, and and that's where the boom is. Uh, we never had dearth of data. In fact, uh, a, a very famous physicist, John Archibald Wheeler, who worked very closely with Einstein, and he was a mentor of uh, Richard Feynman, said that um, what we call the past is built on bits. So if all our past is built on bits, our present by, by the same analogy is bits and future is bits, we always had a lot of bits, but what has changed is our capability with these endpoints, with these sensors to capture that data and then the need to process that data and provide analytics on that data. And then of course our ability to uh, store that data because the storage cost has plummeted and, and, and that's all uh, goodness for us. Um. So I wanted to follow up, uh, Septak, on something you said about uh, the percentage of data that sits in, in SQL today, right. 80%, and nobody would, would disagree with that. Right. What's interesting though is the conversation of what it's going to look like five years from now or that's 10 right, years from that's now. That's right, that's right. And um, you know, I love the Horton Works Manifesto where they talk about that within five years, now who knows if that's the right time frame, the 50% of the world's data will be on, on Apache Hadoop. So now, I don't know if it's five years, 10 years, or 15 years, but is it heading, do you, does, is Microsoft's view that it's heading in that direction? Would you agree uh, with that? Um, yeah, absolutely, means, uh, because, uh, because of what I said, means data is coming right. uh, in so fast and furious, often we don't have the time to think when the data comes in as to what should I do uh, with yeah. it. So I, I can't determine a schema 
when the data comes to me, I, I just dump it. And so uh, naturally, the best place to go for that kind of data is HDFS. Uh, we often term it as the digital shoebox. I'm just stuffing things in in the sure. digital shoebox. So okay, so now I, I I think back to my you know history of I watched this industry for a long time, and I watched Microsoft essentially turn the mainframe into a place that was it's not gone away, but it's become a dinosaur. Will the traditional data warehouse as we know it today become a dinosaur? And I don't think so because uh, how when I speak with customers today and, and a lot of our uh, large customers are already using Hadoop, how they use Hadoop is that they have this giant drive in the cloud, especially for the enterprise. Uh, so this drive is HDFS and, and Hadoop map reduce on top of it. So they're putting all this data there, but they have this, for their hot data warehousing requirements, they have this data warehouse where they they are keeping their uh, last six months of relational data that they want to do, you know, dashboarding on, you know. So the six years in Hadoop, six months in, in absolutely our, our, our yeah. So uh, and and that's a great balance to have, and especially as we evolve towards tool, which is agnostic of the data stores, and and that's what you know the demo that you will see. That's what it it shows that you can keep using the tools that you are used to. Uh, it means everyone uh, knows Excel. If you give that power of uh, ease of that ease of use and and be able to pull in data from Hadoop uh, from relational data stores from data markets all over the internet that that's that's power and and if you can even go a step further for example we have a data explorer plugin if you if you try it out that actually recommends what are the d different data sets that you can you can really uh, awesome so Tapzak, we are going to wrap up, but I want to ask one final question for you. Obviously, uh, exciting to have Microsoft on the cube. Um, it's always great to have the, the big whales kind of come in and show show a little bit of uh, product direction and insights. Appreciate that. Um, it's HD Insights from uh, Microsoft. Check it out. It's in the third test preview, I believe. Um, so my my uh, question, final question is: Share with the folks what's next, what's coming around the corner, what can they expect from Microsoft in this area, for, from you and your team. So. Uh, yeah, one of the uh, main areas of focus is to make sure uh, people can get the insights irrespective of where their data is, including HD Insight and and other versions of Hadoop, it doesn't matter. Uh, so they can get the insights uh, from the tools they're familiar with, that's number one. The second is uh, enterprises being able to give SLAs to their internal customers around uh, Hadoop, just like any other infrastructure, that's that's key, so that they get a single pane of glass to, uh, say, manage, monitor, deploy, and do all those fun stuff from. Uh, so th that's the other uh, big area. And the third big area is that uh, we want to be, uh, most big data projects actually start small, sometimes with a access database or a, or a Excel spreadsheet or even a notepad list. Right, uh, but over time, as the people generate IP, it kind of tries to uh, starts to take off. We want to ensure that uh, as it goes from small to really big data, from a few uh, kilobytes to a petabyte, we they don't have to dramatically change um, how they think about that data, how they interact with that data. Uh, they they and it, it doesn't break their their. Uh, march towards uh, bigness. <laughs> okay, great data. to have Microsoft on the queue. We're going to be tracking you guys. We'll be watching you guys. Great to, to collaborate and extract that signal from uh, all the noise out there, especially around Microsoft these days. So congratulations on the great work. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break here on the Cube, SiliconAngle.tv's exclusive coverage of Strata plus Hadoop World in New York City for Big Data Week. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you.